From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is The Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, the star of HBO's Perry Mason, Matthew Reese. Plus, we'll do the news with Chris Loxamana, and now, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Well, aside from all the homeless encampments, Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the show. Get on. Get it on. Welcome to the show. So much to talk about today. Matthew Reese is here. Perry Mason is his project on HBO. Second season airs as we speak. Good to see you, Matthew. Thank you for having me. Good Chris Max Patton in studio as well. Uh, so much to talk to you about. But uh, then when I found out you were redoing wooden ships, I got really excited <laughs> yeah. because uh, I love woodworking. What was the story with that? Uh, was, uh, inevitably began with alcohol. And yes. I, you know, I, I, I was fortunate to be raised um, as a boy with, a, with a, an uncle who had small wooden boats. And, and I would, you know, troll the kind of boat porn of the Internet, usually late at night, drinking, looking at... Old boat. Uh, and also having, also being a, a slight Hemingway fan, one mm-hmm. night I stumbled across what's called a, a Wheeler Playmate. And mm-hmm. there's not many of them left. They were built in Brooklyn in the 30s. And I struck upon this idea that it would be, a, it would be how wonderful it would be to have a, some kind of Hemingway-esque, this is with a th- very thick pair of rose-tinted glasses on, mm-hmm. a Hemingway-esque experience in New York Harbor on an old boat that was built in Brooklyn in the 1930s. How many feet is that boat? She's 37, 37 feet. And not a sailboat? No, no. She's Powered a, by a... Yeah, n- powered by, now by this year. She's p- now powered by twin uh, twin Yanmar engines that I that I had to put in. Diesel? Yes, through a window. And mm. that was... Uh, yeah, I had no intention of doing uh, this restoration. I had a, wood, a, a wooden boat shipwright picked out. That didn't work out. Got another one. That didn't work out. By that time, I was broke. So the captain went, look, there's plenty of YouTube videos out there. Let's you and me do it. And she's tougher than me. So I went, okay. And we did. We took three years doing it. It's beautiful. We're looking at it now. And now you charter it out. Well, I had to. Char- yeah. <laughs> she had to be chartered now. But yes. Yes. So, uh, yes. Yeah, six, six um, idiotic people will take, will go out on her on, you know, into a choppy New York Harbor. Yeah. So this, and this was the f- one of four of Hemingway's f- boats. The same class, yeah. There's about four left that are registered that we know of. Uh, yeah, she was built in 1939. Hemingway's was a, f- a few years prior to that. Yeah, you'll love this. Hemingway's boat, the Polar, Adam, he, he commissioned it to search for German U-boats in World War II. Really? Yeah. That was his way of getting free fuel. Ah, uh, yeah. there you go. Yeah, he said, if I turn into a working vessel, will you give me free fuel? <laughs> you ask the U.S. government to give it free fuel. Well, you know, I know Hemingway was, uh, I don't know, kind of the, Sean Penn of his time or something, if you kind of think about it, Renaissance guy, artist, and like to throw down, <laughs> like to travel abroad and put them put themselves in harm's way. I mean, it's really, I, I think I, I, I didn't ask Sean Penn when I interviewed him, but maybe, maybe loosely, a lot of fisticuffs. Oh, I'm sure, he, ta- I'm sure he would take that comparison. It was in- interesting, or not interestingly, 90 years ago when Esquire magazine was being formed and the, the, the first editor went to Hemingway because he said, I need Hemingway for that first edition. Mm-hmm. Went to Hemingway, he said, look, Right, right for my first edition, whatever you want. And Hemingway didn't have much money at the time. He said, I want a wheel of Playmate. You put down 50%. And, and Esquire did. And Esquire still have basically the papers saying that they have 50% possession of the Pilar, which is now in, in Cuba, in Havana, Cuba. Yeah, but that was exactly 90 years ago. So you start off in Wales, right? Yeah. Uh, what's the plan initially? <laughs> I think that, that, was the, that was the terrifying uh, thing. There was no real plan. Uh, which at times it never seems to be, but I'd have, you know I, acting was a big thing, not just in 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 our household, but in our country. You know, and the the country is you know is a kind of you know orators and storytellers are also revered. And an older friend of mine went, you know what, I'm going to give this. Like we were in a drama class, and he said, I'm going to give it a go. And I just thought, if he if he if he can give it a go, I can give it a go. So I he applied for the Royal Academy and got in, and I was like. I'll just do that. So I asked my then teacher parents if I could not go to university and, you know, not get a, a, a proper education and go to drama school, which is what I did. 
And when did the break come? When did you come out to L.A.? Or New York? Yeah, the, no, it was it was L.A. The break, the break came, um, I guess there was a, a film called Titus. Well, or, or, I was doing a play on uh, on the West End with Paul Bettany at the time. It was a two-hander. And an American agent came to see and he says, why don't you come out to L.A. for pilot season? So I came out. He gave me the first audition. He said, this is for a movie with Anthony Hopkins and Jessica Lange. Just, uh, Julie Taymor's first movie called Titus. And I got it. And I was like, oh, my God, Hollywood's great. You just turn up and get giant <laughs> so movies. It's, it's brilliant. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, then well, there's Titus. Mm-hmm. With Jonathan Reese Myers, and then you know, spent oh, Jonathan Reese Myers, yeah, and then spent the next kind of ten years not being able to catch a cold out here. Another Reese, is yeah. he from Wales as well? Ireland, Ireland. Uh, yeah, he was one of the Celts that could swim. He's an interesting guy in that he's super talented mm. and he's super good looking. Mm. He seems very troubled at yes. the same time, yeah. and thus I haven't seen him around in a in a bit. But he's a super talent. But I. I think he has demons yes. or something. Yeah. yeah. What kind of uh, American culture would pop would find its way in Wales that you grew up watching or? Seeing? Oh my God! It was only American culture. You know, I grew I grew up watching the A Team, Starsky and Hutch. You know, Airwolf. Um, oh, Adam, basic, Adam did too. All the greats. Yeah. yeah, it was basically. Yeah, anything. that's how you learn to act. That's I, proper acting. I mean, people talk to me about like <laughs> where where did it start? I I joke that. You know, we used to go out into our backyard and play the A team. Like we were, we were trying to mimic American accents when we were eight, nine years old. No one, you know, no one was running out playing Downton, Downton Abbey in the backyard. Yeah, it's it's uh, interesting. Yeah, I grew up watching all those those shows. Where as did well. you grow up? Here, L.A. North Hollywood. Wow. Yeah, one of the Which originals. Is- yeah, it's it's kind of interesting when you're from here because you don't really have anywhere to go. <laughs> You know, you're just here, so don't, don't. But don't don't kind of West Coasters kind of do they make a pilgrimage to the East Coast? Isn't is not the cliche that you know East swaps with West and vice versa? Or no? I happens, well, but. I didn't have any money. No one I knew had any money. Right. We were already in L.A. It just seemed like we would just stay here and let people come to us. Well, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? This was the mecca. The, like this was the Klondike. <laughs> Yeah, but I didn't really know anybody in the business, and I didn't have any have any connections. You would just see people in the supermarket. Maybe you saw George Papard <laughs> in the Gelsons in Studio City. I mean, I mean that that wins. That win, like playing George Papard in my backyard in Wales. You win if you saw him in the Gelsons at the same age. Yeah, and I watch all that stuff too. I always I always marveled at um, the A Team because. The, the the premise was that they were roaming the L.A. underground. underground now, yes. I'm born and bred in L.A. I yeah. still have never heard of any L.A. underground, but underground? Oh. I'd like to be a part of it oh if it God. exists. The, but The A-team in retrospect is incredible. It is. It's, it, it's incredible because they're attempting to blend in yeah. and fly under the radar yeah. because they have the military police on their heels. Yes. But their version of blending in is a custom van right? with a dude with 70 pounds of gold anchor chain yes. around his neck and a yeah. mohawk. And the other guy drives a Corvette. Yeah. And these are middle-aged men who all live at a house at the end yeah. of the cul-de-sac. Yeah. And I don't feel like there's anyone in that neighborhood who wouldn't happily go, oh, who are you looking for? Oh, the, yeah. It's the custom guys. van. I'm yes. down on the end of the yes. street. But if there was, if there was a city, not just in the United States, but in the world, where you think you could blend in, looking like that, I would imagine it would be Los Angeles. Yeah, you're right. You couldn't pull that stuff up off in Muncie, Indiana. No, you'd be, no, you'd they'd be, be like, outed. oh, there they are. Yeah, you'd be outed immediately. Yeah. So you and and you're married to Carrie Russell, right? Well, no, well, not married. You know, we're. I don't know. Close. You, life partners. Life what do you partners. Say, you know, I, because oh, you know I, something pretentious. I just, equally yeah. pretentious. I do. Yeah, it makes the thing. It makes life easier. Uh, I, I just saw her on Cocaine Bear, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun movie. It really is. And and her and Elizabeth Banks, you know, they were working on something else. And 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 Banks was like, "Hey, I've got this thing. It's going in Ireland over the summer. Do you want to do it? It's called Cocaine Bear." And she went, co- 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 "Cocaine Bear." <laughs> right. And she's like, "Yeah." And because she was this green lit by a studio, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, so it was. I love Universal for taking the swing on it, and or you know the the fact that it's based on that amount of truth 
yes. is is equally as wild yeah. as incredible that a bit a, a black bear in Knoxville, Tennessee, ate a kilo of coke. Yeah, well, ev- you know, since Sharknado, everything's on the table. Right, uh, true. Which true. was a TV show, right? But it's it's just there. You know, since Lego the movie, it, it's just can you say something's not going to work in right. advance? Right, right, exactly. Get two words that you wouldn't put you usually put together, and and let's go. Yeah, the sorry, Chris. Oh, yeah. you, so you met Carrie when you were doing sorry. the Americans, right? Yes. Yeah. Actually, we met. Actually, we met in LA many, many years before, about twenty years prior. Uh, and I was trying to impress her by opening a bottle of beer. You know that way, like you with can, a lighter or something. Yeah, or exactly. I beer? didn't. I had. I had a key. That's the only thing I had. And I just remember ruining <laughs> my thumb. Oh yeah, and oh, sure. not opening the beer. Um, oh. But she did. She did give me a number. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. This, she's beautiful and a great actress yes. too. And by uh, the way, the the Americans, even I'm, I'm not even kidding. This month alone, I've had two different uh, couples come up to me and go, "Oh, we just started a new show. What is it? Oh, the Americans." Like it's it's constantly getting a second, third, fourth wind. Yeah, they started. Uh, they they rediscovered it or yes. discovered it for them. Yeah, yeah. Now the best uh, beer opener in the world was uh, William the Refrigerator Perry, the three hundred and fifty pound from the lineman. Chicago Bays. Yeah, I went on a, a fishing with him once. Wow, it was for a bit, but we still went fishing. Yeah, and he had this giant ring, not a Super Bowl ring, just, yeah, just giant ring. And every time he handed him beer, he took this huge mitt paw yeah. of his with this ring. He just catch it on the end, oh. just pop it, hand it back to you. It was like it. His hand was like that thing in the Coke machine that you would just pop it and yeah. just hand him beer. That I, wins. I just, I got shit faced just because I wanted well, to yeah, see yeah. him do it as many times, times as possible while yeah. we're on the lake. Well, hang on. What were you fishing for? You, you, that was lake fishing? You, you, lake were a, you fishing. were in a small boat with that man? I was in a small boat with the fridge. How did that work out? You know, we were doing the man show and I was sitting around with Jimmy Kimmel and somebody just came in and said, Here's my pitch. Fishing with the fridge. I mean, it's a great pitch. And we're like, Where? he loves fit. The fridge loves fishing. Do you? No, but <laughs> I'll take one for the team. Yeah. I'll go fishing what? with the fridge. Well, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't. Anyone would. Right. You have alliteration. You have a guy who loves fishing. <laughs> you have me and Jimmy in the fridge on a, on a boat. Right. You have an enormous man in a small boat. Yeah, we can probably find a picture of uh, fish, fishing with the fridge. And, right. and all all I really remember him talking about was back home. And one of the, I don't know where he was, Carolinas or something. He had a, he's getting ready to put a pig in the ground. That was his whole thing. He, yeah. He brought the pig. They wrapped it in chicken wire. He dug himself up. He had a pit. He made a barbecue. Wow. Out of there out you of are. It. There you are. Yeah, there we are. Fishing with the fridge. 40% of that boat. If, yeah. there, if ever there was a show, we should be called Fishing the Fridge. Fish also, you're right. casting, you're displacing weight in a kind of slightly vicious way by casting. Yeah. I remember, uh, all I remember is he said to me when I caught a very small fish and presented it to him, he just looked at me and he said, you done worked your way up to a zero. <laughs> <laughs> remember just That's a good line. It's yeah. a good line. Sorry, go back to the pig. He wrapped it in chicken wire. He... Had the pig that was waiting for him at the butcher, yeah. whole pig, yeah. that they dress and yeah. wrap in chicken yeah. wire, yeah. I guess. He had just dug himself a pit mm-hmm. and did a masonry block pit in his backyard. Yeah. And he was excited to get home to put the pig in the pit. I would be excited. Of course. And I, I would be excited. And I like it. When people are on point, like yeah. that's exactly what I would picture the fridge doing when he got home. Yeah, that's what he should be doing. Yes. If yeah. you, so you waited for this pig to get cooked. Hmm. Did you wait for this pig to to indulge? No, his pig was his pit was at home. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Did you didn't go? You didn't. You didn't go back. There's no home? invitation. No. I, I was. No, we were at lake. We were the, we were at lake something out here. I can't even. If you're cooking a I pig, that's a party. Where yeah, where it cooking. is. March the first, which is which is uh, St. David's Day, so, well, it's the pain, it's the patron saint's day of Wales, the Welsh Saint Paddy's Day, they call it. When huh. I used to live in L.A., we used to cook a whole lamb. Wow! Up, up in the hills <laughs> until someone said, "Do you have, do you have any idea how dangerous it is what you're doing?" We were like, "What?" <laughs> they were like, 
the, the amount of open flame you have in the Hollywood Hills. Oh, I was thinking about cocaine bear co- sniffing around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. That's, that's always, that's always animals. Well, yeah, I, I, I didn't even thought of the coyotes. You know, I think we'd have a better chance fighting the coyotes than a wildfire. Oh, you did that out here? Yeah, for many years until someone said, this is madness. How did it work? Amazingly well. It was, it's a Patagonian way of, uh, or, you know, Argentinian way of, they call it the crucified uh, you you basically built built a build a cross an iron cross and then you you crucify the lamb to it and then you you put it into the into the ground over an open fire kind of at a forty five degree angle and then turn it oh. as, wow. as you drink for hours it's a it's a good way to pass the day Pam Anderson would not approve oh really Is she, yeah she's Peter ah, she's hard really. Peter she, she was hiking Peter, in those hills whoever he is <laughs> he's more than welcome <laughs> how long does it take to cook a whole lamb that way About six to eight hours. Really? Yeah. I just feel like I would fuck that up badly. Well, the problem is, inevitably, you start drinking at around yes. 11, 11 a.m. So yeah. by 7 p.m., it's a charred piece of <laughs> yes. mutton. Oh, yes. look, look, it's exactly that. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. a splayed yes. lamb. Yes. And we Man. should do it every March 1st. You should, we should put you in touch with the fridge. Uh, me I and the like fridge? you guys could talk. Yeah. Yeah, split. Yeah, he's putting his stuff in the ground. You're I'm, stringing I'm it up top. It, yeah, <laughs> together. I'll, I crucify. He buries. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This looks like a, like a satanic ritual or something. That it really. Yes. If, if you hop the fence and land in that yard and saw that, you would jump You'd right say, back. Whose over the child fence. is that? Yeah, I right. that on the Last of Us. <laughs> yeah, it's like that Sunday. moment in Silence of the Lambs when the, you know, there's, the prison guard is is uh, strung up on the cage. Did um. So the the crazy, I was hearkening back to um, your partner, Carrie, yeah. in that movie Waitress, and that crazy story of the actress, writer, co-star, mm. who wrote Waitress, mm. being killed in a like, Manhattan apartment office. Yeah. Uh, I think there was a doc that came out about that, but it was just such a bizarre, crazy story. Did you ever see that film? I didn't see the doc. Was the doc made by her husband? I think so, yes. And, and also the authorities were like, well, she killed herself. Yeah. You know, moving on. Like, yes. really? It was, That's, it was all, it, it's it was, that easy. Yeah. It was so dark how, yes. how that went down. And that, you know, transpired it was a murder. You know, it wasn't It wasn't a murder because, you know, I think the husband was saying, I, I'm, I'm not for one second taking that. And and rightly so. And it was, yeah, it turned out it was a, it was a murder. Yeah. I, I realized like so many parents and spouses sort of fight against um fight against uh the suicide thing a because they don't believe it and then b a little bit of an indictment on them yeah well yeah yeah <laughs> you know what i saying, mean oh yeah well, what were you doing that he killed himself? you're right i mean how how good a husband or dad or mother yeah. like were you yeah. to this kid that yeah. did this or this this person what was her i mean has it been so it's Adrian Shelley. Fifteen Shelley's. years, right. yeah. She she passed in two thousand six. Oh wow! Wow! Yeah. yeah. So she wrote. I think she wrote Waitress. I think it was a play or something like that. I think the play came after, right? Or yeah. was it? I don't know. Well, oh. normally it comes before. But yeah. She, I, she wrote and co-starred and directed in the two thousand seven yes. film. But yes. That was after she passed. Yeah. So it was released after oh, she passed. It was yes. After she passed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My yeah. God. Yeah. It was just after she finished it making. Couldn't get more the movie. Tra- more tragic. No. It's but awful. Carrie was great in that. I mean, you yeah. you watch that film, you will fall in love with your partner. I did. That's then I asked her to bake and she refused. <laughs> oh, she oh, wouldn't yeah. bake yet. No, although she is, I'll say she is she an incredible baker. That's not just, uh, that wasn't just fortuitous. Yeah. You know, she she can, she can makes a mean pie. So you, you don't want to have the ceremony, the actual marriage with her? Is that something that you guys are discussing? Or No, you know, it's an open discussion. Yeah. Yeah, it's still ongoing. I think the kids want it more than we do. It's so modern. I know, that's what I say. I'm bu- <laughs> I buck very little these days. Let me buck something. <laughs> so I'm always like, no, let's do something else. Is yeah, that let's, you, let's kill a lamb. Is, <laughs> is that you bucking or her bucking? She, this, it, it, the buck, we pass the buck. <laughs> you pass goes, the buck. Literally goes back and forth as to who's in the mood, basically. Oh, who okay. feels the most romantic at any given moment. So does, does the state of California recognize you as a couple? They don't. They, the state of California recognizes me as an illegal immigrant at the moment. <laughs> so until that's rectified, uh, <laughs> no. We live in New York now, so that's so. Uh, you know, although we had we had we yeah we had some 
some issues getting getting the um, getting our our son. Um, I was going to say registered. <laughs> Do you reg- does one register a child these days? Naturalized. No, basically, basically, you know, um, Carrie, Carrie had been married. She was separated from her husband for quite a long time. But, oh, but they weren't divorced. So we, mm. we were together. We had a child. We're leaving the hospital with the child. And they said, oh, yeah, let's register. Blah, blah, blah. We do all the things. And then we're almost walking out with the kid. And the, kid, and the woman goes, oh, oh, quick question. Sorry, I forgot to ask. Have you, been, have, you been, have you ever been married? Says to Kerry. Kerry goes, well, yeah, technically I'm still married. I've been separated from my husband for many years. But we're, oh, she goes, oh, hmm. we're going to have to do the form again. Oh. And I said, oh, right. And then she looks at me and she goes, I'm very sorry. I won't be able to put you on the form as, as the, the, the child's father. And I said, uh, <laughs> sorry, what? Sorry, what? She was well, well, uh, you know. Uh, and there's some ancient old, yeah, you know, law in New York State, which is basically saying women are possession, because mm. if they have a child out of wedlock, then the natural father can't be recognized on the birth certificate. Wow. Yes. New York. Yeah, I lost my mind. Of course, as a, as I attacked this draconian, <laughs> you know, law of. For, so for for a long time, I wasn't on the on the uh, birth certificate. I this name popped in my head. One of the I believe from Wales, Tom Jones. <laughs> no, but we'll see. <laughs> famous, but not famous, not famous, but a boxer, Johnny Owen. No, Joe Calzaghe. Yeah, yeah, Joe Calzaghe. I believe retired unbeaten, undefeated. Yeah, maybe forty and zero. 46, I want to say. Probably won a few more. Yeah. Last fight was with Roy Jones Jr. at the Garden on November 8th. Oh, so you know your Joe Kalzaki. I was, uh, was, uh, yeah, I was, I was ringside for uh, the Vegas fight and and his last fight at the Garden. Yeah. Joe Kalzaki is, I I imagine there's a movie being made or something about that guy. Yeah. He was this. There is. That was his last fight. He. It's very rare to retired undefeated. Yes. Uh, it's very rare to retire in the middle, middle or weight ranks mm. undefeated mm. as well, because there's just so much competition yes. at that, at that weight. Um, and he, he also, it's funny because I cast a guy in my movie that Joe Calzaki Fought Who? after watching the fight, there was a guy who was in my movie. I did a boxing movie uh, called The Hammer. Oh. His name is Jeff Left, Lacey. Left Hook Lacey. Mm-hmm. And Jeff Left Hook Lacey was this unstoppable sort of clubber lang. Yeah, the new Tyson they called him. Type. Yeah, yeah just built like an Adonis. Oh, yeah. Muscles for days. Yeah. Knocking everybody out. Yeah. And he went and he was going to fight Joe Calzaghe. And I was like, oh, boy, Joe's, you know, 28 no or whatever yeah. at this point. But yeah. he's met his match with yes. Jeff Left Hook Lacey because right. this guy is a beast. Yes. Right. He and the hammer played uh, Malice Blake. He played the the guy I, I ended up sparring with or something like that but that's why i cast him i i and i was he was a beast yeah and calzaki just put on a clinic yeah just all movement yeah all head movement yeah. just he he put on a boxing clinic he yeah. he he knew he didn't have this guy outgunned nobody did no in that weight division no he wasn't gonna stand and trade with him in the center of the no. ring but he just put on a clinic. Yes. And any young up and coming boxer should just watch that to say it's 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 about more than just how big your right hand is. Um, absolutely. And 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 Calzaghe suffered from so much hand damage. You know, he, he was a knockout artist for 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 the early part of his career and and did knock a lot of people out and then damaged his hands and then kind of changed his style of fighting and as he said, you know, they he used to get accused of being called Joe Cal Slappy, but he said it's it's boxing. It's not called knockout, you know. Right. Uh, and and I remember how fearful I was of that fight of the of the Lacey fight because everyone was like, "This could be it. This yes. this could be it. Well, the end this, of this run. This guy just looked 
menacing and oh, scary. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. It was knocking everyone out. And he walked into the ring carrying an English flag. Oh, he did. Yes. To to and which many say which which was what the fire he gave to Kalzaki was waving the English flag in his face and went, okay. See, every guest who comes in here, female comedians and whatnot, I try to talk to them about Joe Kalzaki, and they, only, they have a limited scope <laughs> of information. Yeah. yeah, they know his record. Yes. They know, you know he's from Wales. Of they understand the hand damage part, but yeah. that's as far as they go <laughs> with they Joe Kalzaki. They never changing technique. No. No, no it, that, is, that he was trained by his father, and his father was a jazz musician and says boxing is like jazz. Really? Yeah. But yeah. you are now the leader in the clubhouse yeah, of the l- Joe Kalzaki <laughs> Trivia department. At last, I'm seeing a round of applause. At last, <laughs> something I know something about. Yeah, you can find a picture of him, Ben, of me and in, in my movie. So I watch this guy. I was like, this guy's scary. Yeah, uh, I lived in lived in Florida, and I said, uh, this guy should play the guy who's scaring me in in the movie. I, I, that, I, that, that's a great a great casting choice because he's scared. He's he and he was a uh, nice guy, funny. Oh, was he? And uh, did you ever? Did you talk to him about the Kalzaki fight? God, I bring that one up. I, I know <laughs> hey, because you were his next fight. <laughs> yeah, I, technically. <laughs> well, I, had, I I I know he had an injury. He had like a, a shoulder injury or something. Going into some, the Kalzaki fight? No, I don't know oh. if it was going into it, but I know he was his his career was shortened and hampered. Right. By this injury that he he had, that's right. that's what I right. that's what I recall. But uh, and uh, pardon this statement, but it kind of proved anybody could act. <laughs> <laughs> not in the Americans, but I just looked. I saw this guy on TV. I'm pretty sure. What year was the Kalzaki fight? Well, you you would oh, know. That I mean, Lacey like fight. oh of oh, about oh, 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 five or something. I I, I don't. I don't that was remember. Oh, six. Oh, six. Six. Oh, so that was, yeah. yeah, so you would have filmed the hammer right after that fight. Wow. Because that your hammer came out in 07. Yeah. So I I I'm pretty sure I watched uh Left Hook Lacey and I was like, this guy's super menacing. And uh all he has to do is act like a boxer. Right. And and act scary. <laughs> right, right. Which he's done. Yeah. And uh we just flew him and his girlfriend out from Florida and I just said, uh, look scary. <laughs> and he did. And be mean. And did he? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. Which part of Florida? Is he Pensacola? St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. Yeah. And what did he he, he retire with? Because, I like, again, he was a real hot prospect. Yes. He, he was, ran uh, into Calzaki, and that definitely stymied him a little bit. Yeah. And then I think he had a shoulder injury. Calzaghi, and... I had a few nights out with Calzaghi after he retired, and then once we, we were very drunk, and we were talking about boxing, and and and... and one of the worst things you could see is someone as fast as Kalzaghi is that any per- any fan <laughs> of his comes up pretending to kind of... Yes. And you see him with such grace at all times, kind of go, oh, <laughs> yes, <right. laughs> And And we were messing around one night, and he said, and he, and he, and we were talking about his speed, and he went, try and hit me. And I went, oh, no, no, no. And wow. then he went, he went, no, 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 try and hit me. I said, because we, we drank a lot. I said, no, no, no. He goes, just try, just try with all your might <laughs> to hit me. And I did. And I, and I, this may sound like an exaggeration. And he did this thing where he kind of slapped my cheeks. like three, In between in between, your punches. Yes, yeah. about three times. And I went, and then I didn't see him move. And I was like, holy <laughs> God in heaven. Yeah. I understood the speed of the man. It was it was staggering. Yeah. The um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't know if that is the hammer online. Oh, I hope it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm going no, after this. Oh, oh, is this may, it? May, may, oh, maybe maybe maybe. So this. How would you like to move a few rounds with Malice Blake? There he is. Yeah, scarily. <laughs> See. <laughs> there he is, Malice Blake. Malice yeah. Blake. If you give what I learn from watching movies is if you give the guy a crazy first name, you have yes. to give him a sensible last name. Smart. And if if you give him a crazy first name or last name, then mm. you have to give him a crazy 
Right. So it's like always like John Stonebreaker. He's a lawman. You know <laughs> Lightning what I mean? Lightning McQueen. But they would never name him Justice Stonebreaker because people right. go like, no, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's yeah, yeah. buying this shit? Yeah, I, good. So they give him a good straight John. Yes. Then they give him a crazy. I said, well, let's give his first, let's make his first name crazy. Yeah. We'll make his last name Blake. pedestrian. It's I like still it. balanced. I like it. I'm, All right. We'll take, a, we'll take a quick break. More Calzacki talk yeah. right after this. <laughs> Simply Safe. My listeners know I recommend Simply Safe, and I'm not the only one. U.S. News recently named Simply Safe the best home security system of 2023, and we got a testimonial. That's right. That's Dawson. I just updated my Simply Safe system with new wireless outdoor security cameras, mm. cameras inside the house as well. I added some motion detectors. It's the easiest thing to set up. You run it through the app on your phone. Put the connection that you're connecting right next to your base station. It walks you through everything. It couldn't be simpler. And what I really love about it is on my phone, I can look into the camera in my living room and watch what my dog is doing. And if he's about to knock over the trash can, I can press a button and yell at him. Oh, my God. It's awesome. The voice of God. And that's Dawson's voice as well. That dog wouldn't listen to me. Under a buck a day, less than half the price of traditional home security systems. You can lock, unlock doors, access your cameras, as we talked about. Arm and disarm the system from anywhere. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash Adam. And you get the free indoor security camera plus 20% off with your order with interactive monitoring. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like Simply Safe. In celebration of Jim Carolla's upcoming 92nd birthday, here's a list of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Number 31, worn a leather jacket. Just one of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Uh, Matthew Reese is here. Perry Mason is yes. his uh, can I, project. Can I interrupt yes. for a second? So was that about your father, I take it? Yes. He's 92 and he's never worn a leather jacket. I don't think he's owned a leather jacket. Wow. That, that, that caught me. That's not even the worst one. Oh. <laughs> well, most people have parents that are into this or into that yeah sometimes not this and that right you know what i mean you, they they have a thing where it's like ah my dad doesn't he doesn't like to go to plays or musicals he that's, likes he likes to be in the garage that i can understand turning a wrench yeah that's fine or some version of that right my dad's the only person i know who doesn't like anything that's sort of amazing i i literally growing up in in the house there wasn't a bottle of booze and there wasn't a Playboy in the house. Like, my dad doesn't drink, not because he had a problem, just because he doesn't, it just, it's something. He, right. he literally, he's never had a highball. He's never uh, shadow boxed with Joe Calzacki. <laughs> Well, uh, high and drunk on Guinness. But, but but even just living through the 70s and not owning some kind of leather jacket is, is a testament to his to how obdurate he could be. I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll find a picture of him like uh, OJ wearing his Bruno Mali shoes. But I, surface. I, yes, uh, Mike Lynch and I put all these together and I emailed him last night and I said, Hey, uh, worn a leather jacket airs tomorrow. Are you 100% on this? Because... In the 70s, yes. Yeah. You've seen old pictures yeah. of Jim Carolla. He looks like at one time he possibly wore a leather jacket. So we were both a little bit nervous. I've never the, seen him yeah. in, a, in a leather jacket. Wow. To the, to the best of there my knowledge. He but he didn't gamble. He didn't like cars. He didn't go to the track. He didn't have a team. He didn't smoke. He didn't drink. He didn't crucify a lamb. Wow. He didn't put a pig in the ground. He didn't fish. He did. Was he's there the anything? only person what, I know that he didn't do but anything. Was there something? What was his thing? His Apart thing from have, hosing the garden, as we're looking at. His thing would have been reading. Okay. On a sofa. Right. He didn't yeah. own a. He didn't own a frisbee or a racquetball or a pair of cleats or a golf club. He just, yeah. he just he take, sat on a take, sofa. Did he right. take you to do anything? Not really. What you? What you? What you kind of understand sadly, as a, as a kid, is you'll 
eat out exactly as much as your parents want to eat out. Right. If they don't want to eat out, yeah. then you ain't Forget eating it. out. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's no steak joint you're going to when you're nine because you forced your parents to go there. My, right. my dad did not go to the steak joint. He didn't have a restaurant. He didn't have a bar. Right. He didn't have a team. So how many Dodgers games are you going to go to right. if your dad, who has a driver's license, and some money, not not really much, doesn't want to go to the Dodgers right. game. Yeah, you're saying his decisions and his, yeah. his desires. I'm getting a little John Turturro from your father. Mm, a, little, a, little, a, a little bit. He's got a little Turturro yeah. in him. <laughs> the first thing, Matthew, on the list of 92 things that Jim Carolla has never done yeah. was thrown a dart. <laughs> no <laughs> way. It just Well, where, where would he... He wouldn't well, yeah. have a dart right. or a dart board. He wouldn't be in a pub You're with Joe Kalzaki. Of course, throwing all, darts. It all leads, leads yeah. There, yeah. You know, I'll tell you one thing that is nice about um, being from Wales. <laughs> and, and we don't really have. See, this is the problem. A lot problem of people never start a sentence w- That's, <laughs> with that, ever. I know I can bring up Joe Kalzaki and you will be an encyclopedia on him because there's only so many prominent people people from right. from Wales. You didn't right. even bring up Joe Kelzaki. You just said, I know I'm thinking of a guy from Wales and he brought up Joe Kelzaki. That's Kelsaki. right. Yes. That's a that's a that's a good point. Yeah. So when you're from LA, yeah. there is none of that. No one cares. There there's oh, no I don't, come on. Sean. No, I mean they they care about Meryl Streep. I'm, right. I'm just saying there right. isn't a thing that we all know. Right. I don't know all the notable people from North Hollywood. Right. It's just not a thing. Right. We don't care. We're not proud of it. Right. See, another thing Wales does is we we se- revere and celebrate Griffith Jenkins Griffith, who gave L- L.A. Griffith Park. The, oh, really? The largest municipal park in the United States. Really? Yeah. I did not know yeah, he, was, he lived in from Wales. Yeah, he lived an incredible life. Yes. Didn't end so well. And and a great deal of, of, of Angelinos at the time when Griffith shot his wife through the eye, tried to eradicate him from the history books. You know, were he alive today, I'm sure he'd be, you know... Sure. Polar- Cancelled? Yeah, or possibly a schizophrenic or, you know, oh, bipolar, bi- bipolar or... What but- was the story? Oh, my God, it's vast. It's Griffith, sweeping. I grew up out here, so Griffith Park... It was, it was about all the entertainment we had because it was free. Well, and it yes. wasn't very far Did away. Did Jim ever take you to Griffith Park? <laughs> I'm trying. I, I, I've definitely been to a few parks with him right. because parks are free. Yeah, exactly. And he would just sit and read right. while I just ran ran in a circle. That sounds like a great... It's, it's, it was an awesome day. I always cite Griffith Park as the place we should bring all impoverished people from these horrible lands who land on our shores. Right. And the reason that it's always crazy to me is Griffith Park has ponies mm-hmm. and the kids get on the ponies yeah, and the ponies just go in a circle. Yes. So the first thing you'd have to explain to the person from Ethiopia <laughs> is he'd want to know where they're going or are they pulling hooked up to a mill or something? Or <laughs> right. go, no, that's no. just, we're just entertaining yes. four year olds. Yes. They s- just, they just go in a circle. My son, do you have kids? Yeah. We my, took them there. Yeah. My, I took my kids there too. Then right next to the ponies is a miniature train. Yes. And you, again, would have to explain to the person from the impoverished village, yes. this train is not hauling logs or no, coal. No. It's not taking these people anyway. They go in a circle. Yes. We just burn fuel yep. entertaining five-year-olds going into a circle. Yes. And then I would walk them across the street to the fountain. Oh. And they'd go, what, what's going on with all that clean, drinkable <laughs> water? Go, We're just blasting it into the air until it evaporates. Yes. And they'd go like, what? what? But isn't that, this a desert? And you're like, that, yes, it is. Shouldn't that go towards crops? No, no, oh. we just shoot it in the air. Yes. And they'd be like, what are those people doing? They're taking money and they're throwing it. <laughs> <laughs> into this. <laughs> into this device. Welcome that to what, America. Uh, the, here yeah. we are. What else do yeah. you need to know? Yeah. This is our. This is this great country in one small park. It just in you know two square blocks of Griffith Park. Yeah. I could sum up this country you from just, you, all the people. You just did. I just did, yeah. didn't I? Yeah, yeah. And that was part of, part of part of Griffith's you know big message when he gifted the land. 
because uh, was that he said this should he saw the impoverished of LA and he said they need they need lungs this city needs lungs what year was this about 1898 mm, wow and that then, far back yeah mm-hmm. yeah and he said this must be somewhere where everyone can come and he said something quite you know sweeping at the time he said regardless of creed or color wow and it must be open 365 days a year and he made the he, he made the deed absolute that no one could ever take it away or build on it or do how anything. did he get the land how did he pull this off he was coming oh, it was when the backstory itself is incredible he was he kind of lied his way through life and he lied his way into a, a san francisco newspaper and they said does anyone here know anything about mining? He's like, yeah, I'm from South Wales. Well, of course I know everything about mining. He knew mm-hmm. nothing. Mm-hmm. So they sent him uh, to Mexico to report on all the silver mines. And he was coming back through, he wrote in his diary, a backwater called Los Angeles, population 7,000. Yeah. Wow. When they were giving away the, the land and, and this enormous piece of land called the Rancho Los Feliz was for sale for a dollar to whoever, whoever would, would, Jesus Christ. would farm it. And he saw that the LA River ran through it and mm-hmm. it was an oversight on the city's behalf. And he said, I'll buy it. And he bought him before the ink was dry. He said, now you got to buy the river rights back from me. Otherwise I'm going to damn this river. And they were like, oh, sh- <laughs> shoot. <laughs> and then he became the, an enormous money lender and, and basically was the front run of the, this, you know, was the, one of the real architects of, of Los Angeles. But he's, he's from Wales. Not far from, in fact, very close to where Calzaghi's from. I, uh, I go back so far in this city that when I was probably about nine or 10, my little weird free range hippie school put on a go-kart race. We're going to do like a go-kart where you can just coast down a hill and we're trying to find a place <laughs> to do it. And we found the old zoo, Ooh. the old LA zoo yeah. was abandoned yes. and on yeah. some weird part of Griffith yeah. Park, sort of next to where Empty the new cages. one is. Yes. Empty cages, weeds growing up through the ground. Just a long, you know, if you go to the LA zoo, you'll walk up a long path. Well, you can imagine taking a go-kart down that path would be fun. And uh, that's back when you could just sort of trek about. You yeah. know, you could go up there crucify lamb no one no would questions know. asked no I, th- it's still I, i've i've made my way into the old zoo it's it's kind of you have yeah it's incredible and and for those who are willing to do it i've in fact i think it's been commercialized now you can kind of spend the night in the old zoo and oh stuff. really i think so is that where your love of racing came from this downhill run <laughs> this downhill to but your in your you gave a speed your demon first after that. foray the the that that initial adrenaline <laughs> rush I always liked the, the kind of speed and the racing and the, and the go-karts and stuff like that. I, I never had access to it because of my... I, Jim I, was on the sofa. I hope <laughs> never going to the go-kart track would be on that list somewhere, <laughs> Dawson. But my dad, it, it, it involved money. And well, he of course. He couldn't do it. But, uh, but, I, but I did have the need for speed, but I got <laughs> fucking whipped on this, this race. And, and I... It was devastating. Did it me. happen more than once? It was just a, was this a uh, one-off? We did, we, we, did a, we did a series of runs. Well, yeah, I'd hope. It was a big buildup in the school. You know, we're doing the go-kart race. I was the odds-on favorite because I was the speed demon of the, of the group. Wait, did you build your own? I built it with my, de- oh, with uh, my oh, grandpa. Oh. Is this where the love of woodworking comes? My grandpa kind of had a couple of tools right. and, and liked doing stuff, and I would go to his house Is in North Jim's Hollywood. Is this Jim's dad? No. Oh. This is- uh, Your mom's dad. No. Oh, another grandpa. We were early Sorry. money. I'm waiting in- we, we were early money on fucked up, broken Got families. Gotcha. I had never, gotcha. So I didn't know my either biological grandfather, right. but he was a step-grandfather okay. from Hungary, oh. and he was a good dude, and he liked- Building things, so right. I built kind of the go kart at the at the school, but I didn't have the axles and the wheels part worked <laughs> out very well. <laughs> this is a straight. This is a, you built a dragster part. basically, a straight yeah. run. Yes, yeah, so I didn't. I I I didn't know where we could get the wheels for it. Right now, there was a hardware store called Stevenson's Hardware that was a little mom and pop place that sold those kind of red ball bearing hard, you <laughs> yeah, know, different yeah. size wheels. Yeah. But those wheels were like seven ninety nine a pop, like a corner. You know what Forget I mean? Like there's no, there's no way. No. So we had an abandoned, busted up old 
push power mower that like had the engine out of it or right. something didn't work. Just it's right. always ironic when the mower's being engulfed in grass in the backyard. Yeah. Something symbolic about it. My grandfather said, pull those wheels off. We'll put them on the go-kart. But the problem with those wheels is they're just plastic and they just ran on a little axle. They didn't have ball bearings. Oof. Yeah. They're just, if you yeah. can picture that old yeah. lawnmower with the yeah. plastic yeah. white wheel, yeah. you just yep. pushed it along and it just ran on like a smooth right. axle. Yeah. So he pulled all those off. I was running on no ball bearings. The other kids all had ball bearing. Uh, One stole them from a shopping cart, wow. but, it, oh, nice. but it was ball bearing. Right, right. And, and the other had the red wheels and everything. And when the green flag dropped, Everyone just started going because if you have a wheel with ball bearings yeah. in it versus the mower plastic now. wheels, I just sat there and yeah. tried to yeah. scoot. And then they all whooped me. And then everyone, when we got to the bottom, everyone looked at me and went, well, what's what? wrong? What happened? You're supposed to win this thing. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't have Did ball. you go into the ball bearing speech at that point? <laughs> You're like, do you know how much they cost at Stevenson's or $7.99? I was like, uh, yeah, but my, my grandfather did work out the axle bulb, uh, non-ball bearing, but but, but wheel. I could imagine. I, then you think about your own kids, and it's like, hey, Dad, I want to build a downhill uh, coaster. And you're like, yeah, but, you know, wheels these days. Yeah, forget it. Almost $8. Yeah, let's, just, it's not. Yeah, let's just go to the go-kart track. Yeah. Oh, no, that was an alternative either. But that was the old zoo. I thought we were talking about what? our kids. Oh, our kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, our kids. Oh, yeah. I'd just go get... First off, I would be overjoyed if they wanted to engage in a project like that you this. you liked. Right? Of course. Yes. So You just say, sit in Paul Newman's car. <laughs> Pick one. Pick yeah, one. Mr. Miyagi. Yes. Yeah, they do, don't... Hmm. Are you into racing at all? Like, I know you watch Drive to Survive, right? Do you have any desire to... To get out into the track, or no, I don't. Think, I know, I, no. just because I know I don't. I don't have that skill set. I don't. I don't. You know that kind of. I don't have that low blood pressure. You know the low heart rate or whatever that it is. They sometimes think that those those people have that can sure. do things in slow motion. <laughs> you okay, watch you, Drive to Survive. Yeah. All right. Let me. Let, let's let's go on a little jag about that. Yeah. Enough. Joe Calzacchi talk. <laughs> okay. Let's talk okay. about driving. This is I know nothing about. All right, but here's something that upsets me. Yeah. About that show. Yeah. And and I think I, I'm I think our experiences shall be universal. At least when I, I tested it out with uh, Gary and uh, and Doctor Drew. Okay. Who both love Drive to Survive on Netflix because it's 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 compelling as shit. Mm -hmm. It's it's I mean first off it's just shiny stuff going fast. It makes a lot of noise. It's filmed. Incredibly. Yeah. And it is, I think, the most compelling thing that's on Netflix in, mm. in, its, in its genre. And we all lamented. And then uh, now, now this is going to get ugly. But listen, ladies, uh -oh. you pull us into your shitty episodic <laughs> stuff and we gleefully join you. Yeah. When we try to pull you in on rare occasion to our episodic <laughs> shit, you just announce you're not in the cars right. and go into the next room. Fuck that. We're not into the housewives screaming I at each other. I all that Vanderpump rules yeah, drama. I got sucked into all that. We're not into the fucking realtors screaming at each other. No. But Who yet, here who's selling sunset? Right. We get sucked <laughs> into your shit yeah. because there's drama. Yeah. And there's intrigue. And, it, and it's well-crafted. Yes. And so then we then find... I don't announce I'm not into women's shit. I sit down and watch your shit. But but those who will not watch the F1 series on Netflix can just announce they're not car people and happily yep. waltz yep. into the next White room. Washer. Yes. We're done now. Fuck yep. that. Well, uh, it's a two-way street, ladies. Yes, it is. Yes, but it I, is. I am fortunate. Carrie's best friend watched it. And she said to Kerry, you have to watch this show. It oh, is really? It is oh, more thanks. compelling than any drama you're going to watch anytime soon female friends yeah said that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah yeah that's what we need yes we need a ringer well yeah, yeah. so we'll bring we'll bring andrea onto the show and she <laughs> can break it down yes because it's so good but i realize and this is another beef i have with my family is they just announced they're not car people right and, and once you announce yeah. you're not a car uh, by the way documentaries are made on civil rights. They're made on saving whales. They're yeah. made on backup singers who yeah. never got their due. <laughs> I don't just announce. I'm not into Harriet Tubman. Yeah. 
Wipe your hands and wipe your hands. Civil care. rights? Yeah. What, yeah. Do I look black? Come on. I'm a dude. I'm a heterosexual. I'm six foot two. What do I give a shit about I this? Get, I no, get. I watch all of that shit. Yeah. All the singers, the backup singers, and the jazz musicians that never got their due, and yeah. all the husbands that killed their wives and tried to blame their son. Yeah. I watch it all. You got to watch a fucking car show every once yeah. in a while. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Which is better than your shitty shows. Yes. It has all the drama and the intrigue and everything else. More. 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 It's just they happen to climb into a car and you've announced you're not nope. for any car no. related no. anything. No. Because you're not a car person. No. Because it, because the, the, the F1 element is only taking the best kind of drama anyway and then putting it on steroids. Yeah, and it's a shell. Pardon the pun. The subject of the documentary is just a vehicle yes. to get you <laughs> Always. intrigued yes. in the personal stories yes. that are involved. It's, it's not about cars. No. Ugh. You need to tell them, look, it's a group of people who hate each other. You love those that's, shows. Yes. That's what, how you have to sell it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I agree. <laughs> and, and listen, I'm just saying, ladies... It's a two-way street. You must come check it out. You yeah. will love it. A yeah. bunch of good-looking dudes yeah, very. in it is, is as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it, it is it is interesting that if you just announce you're not into cars, yeah. you can avoid anything that has to do with cars regardless of who's Yeah, involved. that's a broad stroke of whitewashing cars. You're like, I'm not a car person. But it's a also, the, the whole point of the documentary and documentaries in general is to learn shit about stuff you didn't formally know no, about. I totally agree. You so do not make... need to see a doc on Joe Calzacchi. <laughs> no. You would watch the shit out oh, of it. Oh, yes. But I you just don't did. need it. You don't need it. You don't need it. No, no. But whale, yeah, yes. How kind of killer whales are trained in SeaWorld, I will watch. Because, right. So just so I can be indignant about it. <laughs> yes, that's, that's right. terrible. <laughs> Their fins flop over. <laughs> it is true. It. We just, I, I do love people that just watch docs and just announce this is horrible. This and, is you know, I mean, not it, right. It, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and if they were in charge of the aquatics at SeaWorld, there's no oh. way. SeaWorld wouldn't exist for a That's start. Right. I just opened the gate. Is there a <laughs> That's gate? Right. Is it linked to the ocean? Let them run free. Yes. Yeah, I was just listening to a story. I don't know, Chris, did you see this one? I think two orcas, two killer whales killed like 20 sharks. No way. It said strategically, yeah. surgically. Strategically. Well, I'll There's tell you what it is. A surgical I, feeding frenzy, they call what? it. What? But, but, and I don't know if this was it, but- the, the whales, I do believe the killer whales like certain parts of the shark better than others. Good God, I didn't know that. I think that's something I heard. Can we jump from, on this documentary? Yes. Let's yeah, make let's it. Let's get it, right it made. It, it, it is, I think they like their livers. And I oh think my when God, they this is amazing. eat them, they go full Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> and they, that's exactly I right. think they eat their livers. And so if they're going to go through 20 sharks, they're not just going to eat the fins and the skull no. and the, the eyeballs and no. stuff. They, they, I think they go for the liver. I didn't yeah. read the story, but so that's this, shark this liver is a, pate. This, this is off of Af this is mm -hmm. Af near Africa. These two sharks, they're well known. Um, Wait, killer whales? They're they're killer called, whales. They're, I mean, sorry, killer whales. They're well known. They're called uh, Port and Starboard. Wow. No. Yeah, so those are their names. So they're tagged. And they... Uh, they uh, left at least 20 sharks dead recently. Wow. And yeah, yeah, Adam, you're right. So they, they each seven gill shark was torn open and missing its liver. <laughs> they were all females. All the sharks were female. Oh, oh interesting. God. That's a hate crime. Yeah, measuring, <laughs> measuring between 1.6 oh, and 2.3 meters. Look, what, look how precise that bite is. Yeah. You've got to hit that thing, which is probably swimming very fast, Side, you got to T-bone it, yeah. and exactly. I mean, uh, hats off to the killer whales. I say, that, oh, I mean that's the, precision, the, the precision eating, amazing. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so at least seventeen of those sharks were killed, quote, in one sitting. One, yeah, right, because they don't need to eat seventeen sharks; they need to eat seventeen shark livers. Yeah, I mean that's that's crazy, it, right? That's worthy of applause, surely. Yes. Yeah, we need to figure out how to harness <laughs> this power for good. Yes, well. I don't know if I should be saying this. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> make cut it out. It's about. I was talking to a, a a Navy SEAL once, and I was like, "What's the what's the scariest? What's the scariest thing you've had to do?" Well, we were going with scariest as X, Y, and Z. I said, "What was the scariest thing you had to do in training?" And he went, "Oh, the dolphin work." And I went, mm. 
What? He goes, well, the dolphin work. I said, what do you mean the dolphin work? Well, you know, when they're training the dolphins. I said, what do you mean they're oh. training the dolphins? Well, they train dolphins to find sc- uh, scuba guys who are bringing explosives to a boat. Mm-hmm. So he goes, I said, so, so what do you have to do? Well, we have to pretend to put explosives on a boat, and you know there's a dolphin trying to come at you and just kind of go... Right. Yeah. And yeah. It was, it's terrifying. That's some wow. Shit. Yeah. 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 There's the. Uh, they made a movie about that. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh. Oh, then I can't talk about it. Okay. Um, oh, thank God. From the seventies. Oh. I, I'm pretty sure they made a movie from like 1976 called like Day of the Dolphin, and the dolphins were trained <laughs> to go find underwater sea mines oh. or something like that. Okay. There's also a movie called Orca. Yes, of about course. The killer Richard Harris. Yeah. And then. Um, Free Willy. Yes. The shark. No thanks. So also what the killer whales do is they, when they train their cubs or s- cubs? S- pups? Yeah. Seals? Pups. No. When, uh, when they minis. train them, they train them to hunt. Yeah. They'll grab a seal, like a baby seal, and they'll just keep flipping it back with their tail wow. back to like deeper water because the seal's like trying to hustle ass Ooh. to get to the shore, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And so they're not eating the seal. They're basically saying to their little cub, get it. go get yeah. it. And, yeah. and they'll knock it back and they'll throw it back again. And then the thing will kind of sniff it and it'll, it'll, it's, it's trying to get back as fast as it can get back to shore. And they, so this, the seal is traumatized, but the these, seal these is whales completely are traumatized. It. But the whales have a, a, a kind of precision. And the thing that's crazy about the killer whales, they never attack people. Why is that? Why is that? Well, you know what it is? Day of the Dolphin, 1973. Ah. All right. Here's the thing. I think this is it. Yeah. Most shark attacks. See, I think the killer whale we've established has a discerning palate. Right. Right. Every single shark attack I hear about says the shark came up, hit me, locked it, and then spit me out. Right. Because he thought I was something else. Right. Uh, evidently, we don't taste good, yeah. right? But the sharks are too dumb yes. to know who we are. Yeah, they think we're a seal, right? The the killer whale is discerning and goes, "I'm going right for the liver." I know exactly what I want and leave those dumb dumbs. Do you think it's the neoprene when that yes. they hit that neoprene? They go, "Ugh, what? Yeah. What the? F- what yeah. is that? <laughs> yeah, whatever it is." But now the the person that got hit still needs 177 staples. Yes, in their side. So right. he, so thanks, shark. They're still fucked but they have, up. But they have a hell of a story. They have a hell of a story. Because anyone who says, what, you know, what is that? You go, shark bite. You're like, ooh. Yeah. yeah. That wins. That'd be my icebreaker. Right. Yeah. I meet yeah. People, yeah. Yeah. It's the Quint. It's the Quint moment. Um, we have a video of an orca tossing uh, tossing seals that we can watch. We've all done it. <laughs> they got the, got the baby. Look at that. <laughs> They just yes. keep trying to flip it with their, with their. Oh my, oh my God! Oh my God! I mean, surely that's that, that is Ocean Olympics. He yeah, they threw, do that at sea world with people, but he threw a seal seventy-five I'm, feet in the I air. I say launched it. He launched it. Yeah. Launched. I mean, Look that, that is a seven-story yes, yes, yes. building. There's even a seagull having a go. <laughs> Isn't it? That seagull's like, I'll have a go at that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done with these tater tots and french fries in the <laughs> yeah, dumpster. Yeah. Ooh, seal! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seal NATO. Seal, yeah. just <laughs> seal NATO, the, the new one. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, look, right. yeah, the commentary's like, that's gotta be 80 feet! Yeah, so they're, Fair much, play. they're much more further along than we gave them yeah, credit. I think they win. They win. Credit for. They right. win. Yeah. Yeah. Who else fucks up sharks? No one. No one. Roy Schneider. Roy Schneider. But then he had, a, <laughs> right. he had a rifle and a com- compressed air. Um, all right, uh, Matthew, I know you you got an out. Can you hang out a little bit? I don't know. Someone will come to the window, maybe. Well, maybe we'll we'll take a break and we'll yeah. we'll figure that out. Perry sure. Mason, Monday nights, HBO. Oh, we got a. As long a as we say up. that. As long as we say that. Yeah. Perry oh, Mason, good. Monday nights, HBO, second season. Uh, and Perry Mason's another. It's not quite the A team. It goes back a little, a little yeah. deeper. But yeah. it it is on the original is on rotation on like Me TV because uh, in between the Love Boat, yeah, and, and many <laughs> oh, other yeah. delicacies. Oh yeah, comes it, Perry Mason. It's lasted. 
All right, we'll take a break. Uh, we'll do some news maybe yeah, when we come news. back. We'll do that right after this. Let me tell you about Next Evo Naturals. Stress, it is a part of my life. Well, it's a part of everyone's life these days. So that means it's time to try something and see what we can do with all that pent up stress. Get you up to your full potential. All right. So let me de stress you. Check out Next Evo Naturals, the most clinically studied CBD brand ever. Their smart sorb technology can help you get a better start to the year and to the day. The products like Stress CBD Complex, clinically proven to reduce stress by up to 70% and improve concentration by 50%. Uh, I love these guys. I use this product. It works, especially if you want better sleep as well. If you get a better night's sleep, then you're better at everything the next day. Four times better overall CBD absorption. Proven in multiple clinical studies, explore Next Evo products for less stress, better sleep, or as just a boost to your daily wellness in 2023. It's Next Evo Naturals, right, Dawson? Make CBD a part of reaching your full potential with Next Evo Naturals. Go to nextevo.com slash podcast and use promo code ADAM to get 20% off your first order of $40 or more. That's 20% off $40 or more at nextevo.com slash podcast with code ADAM. Let me tell you about AG1 by Athletic Greens Daily. I gave him a try. That's right. It's good. Good for gut health. Although I never had any gut health issues, but increased energy, that you can feel immediately. Immune support, app, tastes great as well. I take AG1 and uh, I hit it in the morning, shake it up. Also kind of makes you feel full, so you're not, not, you're not going to overload at lunch. Easy to fit in your lifestyle. It's the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute. Just one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and high-quality whole food sourced ingredients. My AG1 is delivered every month, so it comes right to your door. Super easy to make it part of your daily habit. Also, you can get the uh, single-serving travel packs as well for when you hit the road. It's AG1, right, Dawson? If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash ACS. That's athleticgreens.com slash ACS. Check it out. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Ace Man, I need a little more information. When you carried that girl to the nurse's office in high school, was it fireman style over the shoulder like a sack of grain or in your arms like Costner in The Bodyguard? Have a good day. Thanks, man. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. The delightful Matthew Reese is hanging out. Perry Mason's the show on HBO Monday nights, and I think I carried her Kevin Costner style. I don't think I threw her over fireman style. She was a, she was kind of a wide load. But what happened? Um, the, the big girl yeah. in our class, yeah. and 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 what people forget about is we think of big girls as sort of fat girls, but there there was a handful of big. Right. Just big. Yeah. Just like a big yeah. dude, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, And they, not many diets will cure just no. being big. Genetics. Yeah. yeah. Pure genetics. Yeah. And as she tried to doll herself up with a, with the high heels and walked into the class and gave way and hit the ground Ooh. and started sobbing. And oh. She wouldn't move and the kids were laughing. So I just went and picked her up and, oh. and carried her. I played football. I was strong enough to <laughs> do it. You're a good man. Yeah. Yeah. But then I forgot about it completely. Uh, but then somebody else reminded also me. Also, you did it Costner style, which is, you know, that's a dead lift. You know, <laughs> that's all from the, oh, from the yeah, ground. Yeah. That's not. Yeah. I was uh, unusually strong when I was in high. You lifted a lot of weights, played yeah. football, and just could do that yeah. kind of stuff yeah. when I was like in high school. How was it afterwards? Like, did she find you out and say, thank you so much for doing that? I have no recollection of the entire thing. It was oh. really only my teacher from that class who came on the show and brought it up. I no completely way. scrubbed it from my mind. 
Wow, that's kind of kind of a big moment to be scrubbed. Uh, I mean, I you know that's a kind of you know uh, officer and gentleman <laughs> ending moment. I will I will routinely scrub decent acts of <laughs> kindness perpetrated by me on other people and, and usually try to focus on the negative right. stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. In terms of what makes it into the memory. I know. That's what spurs us. That's yeah. what you know, drives us headlong into ambition. Yeah, yeah, you don't remember, but she probably thinks about it a lot. Yeah, she has Joe Cocker in her ears when <laughs> singing Love Lifters Up when, that, when that's kicking off. Yeah. She goes, did I ever tell you about... It? And they're like, what, Jim Carolla's boy? The one who never left the sofa? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jim Carolla's boy. All right, do we have uh, some news stories? Yeah, so Chris? there's a lot of parents right now that are really mad um, on TikTok, right? Oh, yeah, I know. Of course. I know. Well, this, this one, I don't know, you guys might agree with. So they get they their kids take their school pictures. Mm-hmm. They get the pictures back, but then there's an option for an extra $12. Well, they'll retouch it. They'll whiten their teeth. Oh, Skin gosh. tone evening. Blemish <laughs> removal. They'll really put the filter on and make these kids look my, cool. I think my kid's school has, like, you can take a mulligan. You can go look at your picture and go, not, not what I had in mind, and go back on another uh, date and redo it. No way. Yes. Yes. Let's have a look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this is one of this is one of the examples. So okay. get rid of the zits. Right. Right. And and um so Even these parents skin tone. they're saying that like, look, this is what's creating the the anxiety yeah. with kids these yeah. days and they're gonna grow up and they're gonna have all these like all this body dysmorphia and things because they're they're now perfecting every picture and they can't really look like that all the time. Right. Right. So they should come to Hollywood. I yes. know, right? This is I know this is something That's that happens here all the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's the simple. There's a simple equation. In Hollywood, you have to get your teeth whitened, not because there's something wrong with your teeth. It's because the person next to you got their teeth whitened, and oh, the person to your right and your left had their teeth whitened. Yeah. Now you need to do it, yeah. otherwise. And someone will say you need to do it. I'll go. Well, what's wrong with it? I go because. He did it, and she did it, and you're you're with them. Now yeah. they'll notice. Now it. you need to do it. So this is where we're at, yes. ostensibly. Yeah. When I went to my first Hollywood dentist, he looked in my mouth and went, "Good God, who did this? Your local blacksmith?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in fact, one parent was really upset because they they photoshopped out the kid's hearing aid. Oh, oh right. yeah. yeah. You like can't. Stuff like that. Yeah. You can't do that. Nah. Yeah. So, so TikTok, I mean, there's a lot of outrage on TikTok, sure, but this I one. I would, I look, as long as like photoshopping out a hearing aid is weird, but is it a two way street? Like, could I have had an Italian horn photoshopped in? Or puka oh, shells? Oh, right. In. Yes. In. Yeah. To fit in more. Yeah. I or like uh, epaulettes. Yeah. You know, oh, that's me, good. Maybe yeah. look like I was of in the course, Navy. In the Navy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good. Like, if you could add shit, then I'd probably <laughs> be down yeah. with right. it. Right. Choice, I mean? choice of uniforms. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Like, Perry Mason like, hat. Oh, yeah. Fedoras. Get, get rid of the zit, but yeah. add like a cool scar. God, like yes. I'm a Bond villain. Oh, that's good. Shark bite. Eye patch. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. And as long as we're, you know, fiddling around with stuff, yeah. let's fix some of that verbiage at the bottom of the picture. You know, let's get captain of the football team. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Best physique. Yeah. Uh, most, most respected. Likely to, yeah, yeah. Most likely, likely to, to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. Now like, in control of your destiny. Now, now as long yes, as we're going down yes. this road, let's just keep going. You just here. turned it. You just turned it. Let's turn the tide on this kind of, you know, on, on what they say right. it'll do. Yeah, we're, everyone's yeah. wanting to push back. We should be leaning in it. We should yes. be. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm. Uh, um, also, Elon Musk oh, is an, uh, oh, Who's he? Mine, <laughs> mine, I'd like mine to say, fuck the camera lady. <laughs> Shortly after the shoot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Who's that? Pr- prodigious. Is yeah. that pretty yeah. great? A coxman. He literally had sex with the woman behind this picture. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Moments after it was taken. The yeah. closest woman to him. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Yeah, that'll, be a, that'll be a good one. How, lo- how, long, how long are you giving TikTok until it's banned? Oh, I don't. It's, I mean, it's I've, getting close. I've heard it's all Chinese and intelligence information gathering yeah, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. They were, I think they were aided. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe Dawson knows this, but. We decided to craft our society about, <clears throat> it was about three, four years ago. Well, it was about like five years ago. We decided there would be a new world order, especially in California, 
certainly Hollywood, but to certainly the United States, where we just said, look, we're not going to crunch any data anymore, and we're not going to try to figure out what works or what's right or what's wrong. We'll just figure out what Trump says, and then we'll do the opposite of what he <laughs> says. So if he says, build a wall, yeah. then we'll go, no wall. Yeah. And if he says, lower taxes, then we'll go, we've got to raise taxes. Right. And if he says, keep the schools open, then we'll go, close the schools. Yeah. So whatever it is he says, we'll just do the opposite. I, he said early, this TikTok thing, I would ban it. Like, Did it's he? not a good thing. Oh. Right. And so we must then of embrace course, well, of TikTok course, of course. because he said he didn't like it. Right. Um, but I think he cited, I don't know, Dawson, you can look it up on computer. I think he had some concerns about China and TikTok and information right. and stuff like that. Now, if he were smart... He'd say, I love TikTok, and if I ever have another kid, if I ever have twins, I'm going to name them Tick and Tock, in yeah. which case, California would have banned TikTok. Right, right. He has to be playing the game. Cool. There is He's- actually a Wikipedia page titled Donald Trump TikTok Controversy. The Chinese put that up. So, <laughs> really? In 2020, the U.S. government announced that it was considering banning the Chinese social media platform TikTok upon a request from then U.S. President Donald Trump, who viewed the app as a national security threat. Wow. The result was that TikTok owner ByteDance, which initially planned on selling a small portion of TikTok to an American company, agreed to divest TikTok to prevent a ban in the United States and in other countries where restrictions are being considered to be da, 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 da. yeah so he was against tiktok so we're for tiktok and right eventually but but we don't stop and go look uh, a broken clock is is right twice <laughs> a day. day maybe maybe two things can be true at once <laughs> <laughs> like look it, if, if donald trump doesn't like chicken liver as a topping on his pizza yeah you're allowed to say I agree. Yeah. I don't like it either. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm against his other policies. Yes. But it was, when it comes to his Chicken pizza liver, policy, yeah. not a fan. Right. And I, he would be right about right. that. So maybe we're, are we, how close are we to the era where we can start sidling into the, you know, D, the DT was possibly right about this? I don't think we'll ever get to possibly right. But <laughs> we might get to, you know, you know, he said, uh, COVID was a lab leak, and everyone yeah. went, it's absolutely not a lab leak. Like, we just, all, all policy, everything was just, California's policy is just the opposite right. of whatever Trump said. That's right. that's how you can figure out what our policy. He said, open up these small businesses. Like, oh, now we're closing down longer. You just bought yourself another six months. So I keep saying to everyone, being the opposite of the guy you don't like's policy is not a policy. You right. need to figure out your own policies. Maybe TikTok is bad. Yeah. Maybe closing schools is bad. You figure it out. Right. Don't just do the opposite right. of what the guy you hate says. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a insane way to govern. Yeah. And it's surely going to lead to results that aren't fantastic. I agree. Yeah. There's. It's okay to have some crossover. A little bit of crossover. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. Well, Elon Musk. He uh, he's apologizing. Oh really? Oh really? Yeah. So he got into it with this uh, Twitter employee. So oh yeah, yeah. So there's this uh, disabled Twitter employee. For, uh, um, he's from Iceland. So oh, he, we, he airbrushed out his wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I just see him sit, just sit walking floating. that way. <laughs> yes, his <laughs> crazy <Floating>. crazy quads, <laughs> <laughs> insane quads to be able to get around that way. So so this guy, his name we'll call his his name's Harold or Thorolfsson, but he goes by Hallie. So Hallie, he uh, tries to sign into his because he works for Twitter. He tries to sign into to his work account, he can't get in. Mm-hmm. He's logged out, and doesn't and and he finds out like two hundred other people aren't be able to get in too. So consequently, he he doesn't hear anything from HR. He doesn't know where. Nine days later, he tweets at Elon Musk like, "Yo, Elon, what's going on? I can't log into my account. Am I fired?" Mm-hmm. And um, and then Musk, yeah, he says, "Dear Elon Musk, nine days ago, uh, my computer was cut." Have you? However, your head of HR is not able to confirm if I am an employee or not. You've not answered my emails. Maybe if enough people retweet, you answer me here. And Musk replies, "What work have you been doing?" Mm. 
And then, um, and he also said, and then so they kind of get into it a little bit where Musk says, look, you're, he's using his disability as an excuse. There's no actual work that he's really been doing while this guy's listing off his accolades. And yeah, people are getting upset with Musk, right? I mean, mm-hmm. even people that have sided with Musk this whole time, they're like, look, you can't talk to people like that in public. Even Elon responded to one guy just about, about Hallie, like, hey, he's the worst. I'm sorry. He's the worst. So... So there's all this back and forth going. Elon then deletes his tweets, takes a video conference with this guy, finds out that um, that that he actually has been doing stuff and apologizes. Mm-hmm. He says, I'd like to apologize to Hallie for my misunderstanding of the situation. It was based on things I was told that were untrue, or in some cases true, but not meaningful. Um, and he, he'd let everyone know he's considering remaining at Twitter, and it's better to talk to people than communicate via tweet. A happy ending. Sending memes. Yeah, but I mean, we don't know. He, we don't. We don't know if he is. Act- we haven't really heard from Hallie after this. After the, the apology. Yeah. But yeah. So it, um, a lot of theories online are just like, oh yeah, Elon's lawyers got to him because he is. Yeah, <clears> like <throat> over half a million people saw the tweet where he called him the worst. He's so, the picture we're looking at. He's dressed in all black, which you don't see a lot of people in wheelchair dressed like Antifa guys, but. I, I all black is not good for a wheelchair just for for my pedestrian standpoint, you know, crossing the street right, at visibility. night purely from visibility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, you got to be visible, you're lower and you're not getting across as fast. Uh hypothetical uh, Matthew. Yeah. Sadder tableau, sadder picture. I'll give you two. Yeah. I've seen them both yeah. in this neighborhood. Yeah. Guy in wheelchair. Yeah pushing himself with his leg that's good backwards yeah. in the wheelchair yeah. across the crosswalk. Yeah. Or fat guy, bicycle made for two, but alone in front. I've seen them both in this neighborhood. Oh, you've got me there. <laughs> you have to I don't know, I'm going in deep. <laughs> it's, it's even. Because, because, because... Big man on bike breaks your heart in a different way. That's why I put it out there. Yeah. And it's funny. It's kind of, it's it's tugging slightly harder at my heartstrings, and I don't know why. Yeah, I know I know as well. But it, what's sadder than a guy in a wheelchair pushing himself backward with, with, with this one, one good leg? Yeah. I mean, listen, but I mean, it, this is a, this is a, you, you can get a hair between both mm-hmm. because they're both, Equally as tragic, mm-hmm. but I don't know why uh, my uh, my eyes are welling up slightly. The thought of the fat man on the bike, because now I'm like I'm watching him ride home. He's mm-hmm. on the bike, trying to lose weight. It's mm-hmm. like it, the uh, the 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 kind of biography I have for him is extensive and detailed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you built the whole story. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm invested now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna add uh, a young Adam Carolla with no ball bearings to that too. Mm. That yeah, lawnmower, yeah. plastic wheels, yeah. getting whooped up on the go kart race. Yeah. You're right, very yeah. sad. All right, you got uh, got another one. Yeah, sure. Um, so let's let's see this one. So there was a, a there's a green bullet train now that they're proposing to build from LA to Vegas. I know we've been talking about this for <laughs> forever, right? <laughs> LA to Vegas. I I remember sitting in North Hollywood High. <laughs> Nursing my sore back after was picking year? up Debbie well, and dragging her fat yeah. ass to the nurse's <laughs> office. Sitting, I was sitting in like Miss Valdivia's class trying to learn Spanish, getting nowhere. And I, I remember this is like 1981, 1982. There was talk of a train. And, to and Vegas. To Vegas. There has always We've been always talk of a, a train a from, train. from yeah. Vegas. A train that soon as you crossed over the line into into Nevada, all the all the slot drinking. machines would light of up, course. the bar would open. This is Viva Las Vegas. Strippers would come down a pole. Poles, yes, it would be. And yeah. there's like, oh, and I remember, understand, uh, airplane flight was pretty much out of the question for the Corollas. There was money. <laughs> there would have been, you'd have a credit card. Like, leave uh, the couch. But the notion of taking that train to Vegas yeah. sounded really appealing to me when I was Indeed like local. 17 and a half. And I remember... You know, going like, how long? Are we doing well, maybe three years. You know, <laughs> maybe we'll be we'll do the ribbon cutting in uh, eighty five. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Fucking nothing. nothing. It'll be perfect just for nothing. We, just, yep. we can't 
do it. I have no idea uh, uh, all the innovation that is California. And that we're on the leading edge. We're the yeah. tip of the spear Silicon for Valley. everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Can't do it. Been talking about it for 40 years. Not doable. Yeah. Well, because how do you make? Well, how do you make it? How how do you make it commercially viable? It's like you know you can fly for how much these days? It'll take you fifty five minutes. Yeah. So yeah. where where is it? And like how much? First of all, how much is going to cost to build? How much are the tickets? What? How are there that many people who don't want to fly from Vegas to LA, LA Vegas? Who go? Thank God, there's the train. Now we don't have to drive. Because I'll never fly. I don't think it's a large percentage. I will say, as a guy who's taken a train in different parts of the country, mm. uh, sitting back, having a drink, sort of chillaxing, it's it's a much more relaxing way to go. I agree. Right? Twice I've done I've done I've done LA to New York on the train twice. Really, and I had two of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. How many days is that? Three, three and a half. Really? Yeah. And the, and and the first why. Time, yeah. What, first time I'd finished a play was years ago, and I was like, I've got four days before starting something else in LA. And I was like, I can't fly anywhere. And a friend of mine just said, just take the train. It'll be the most relaxing thing you'll ever do. And he was totally right. I, like, I finished, this, I finished the play, jumped on the train, and you spend three and a half days going through the entire country. It was incredible. And the guard went, because I got the, like, the little cabin, the little sleeper mm-hmm. with a shower and a couch, and the guard was like... <clears throat> He goes, uh, oh, you're eating with us. So you got three square meals. He goes, you're traveling with anyone? I was like, no. He goes, I'm going to put you on the communal table, and you're going to meet some real interesting folks. <laughs> wow. And it was the best meals I've ever eaten in my life because every meal you would sit down with four to six people who from all walks of life but inevitably had one thing in common. They didn't want to fly. Mm-hmm. And the reason they didn't want to fly is because 99% of them had a conspiracy theory. Oh, and really? What those dinners would, be, breakfast, lunches would be, were six people arguing <laughs> about each other's conspiracy. And it was right. amazing. It <laughs> wow. was amazing. You could just sit and listen. Yeah. yeah. And then there was a bar at night. And then when you went through the kind of dry, you know, the dry states on a Sunday, they'd shut the bar and everyone would run and grab like 12 packs. <laughs> oh, they yeah. shut the bar going through Utah they'd on a warn Sunday. You. They would go warn you. They would laws, warn yeah. you. Or Georgia. Yeah. yeah. So they were like, you got to get to the bar and get your booze if you want to drink for the next six hours. Crazy. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. This bullet train is going to cost ten billion dollars. <laughs> worth yeah, it. Make worth that it. 20. Yeah. Elon Musk is going to build it. <laughs> so they. So it. And it's a green bullet train. How's so that it's going to. It's going to be runs a, on air. Ele- runs on electricity. Yeah. So it's a two hundred eighteen mile high speed network that can, connects Vegas to Southern California. Cruising speed of two hundred miles an hour. Amazing. So the uh, the travel time will be about two hours from here to Vegas. Would yeah. you do it? I'll be in my 90s, but yeah, I would, I would, if someone would help me onto the train, <laughs> by that yes, time, yeah. I'll, I'll be able to enjoy it. I, I believe none of this, by the yeah. way, unless you tell me it's an outsourced company headed up by Elon or somebody that. If it has anything to do with us or the, le- or the city council or the legislators, it's never going to happen. Well, that's, it's, that's um, it's being produced by Brightline, which we saw a Brightline train, I think, in Florida. Yeah, what, remember? Or, or, Dawson can look it up, but... Most trains are electric. Yeah. This People is a, don't yeah, know that. What, yes. what they but have is a diesel generator right. that powers electric motors, I think. So you're still burning yes. diesel. Yes. But that's yeah. that's how it works. So they're hoping to start construction in November? No. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's nothing. Know. We'd bet against it, but we can't get to Vegas. A that's few right. passenger mm-hmm. trains I have converted to electric power, but most of them are diesel, diesel. powered. Yeah. The, but the the diesel power a generator, or does the diesel power the wheel? According to this, the diesel powers the train. But um, you got to keep uh, looking yeah, into I it because I think not. Electric has a lot more torque than even diesel. But as you know, as a as a seasoned mariner, seasoned diesel head, you need diesel in that. In that boat, that thirty-seven footer, because it just generates much more torque. It does than a, a gas-powered God engine. Diesel. All right, we'll take a break. Matthew Reese has been uh, nice enough to hang out and, de- and delight. I'm having a whale of a time. Our audience, a killer whale of a time. I got that. Perry Mason, Monday nights, HBO, second season airing now. Uh, Matthew, come back anytime. 
This I'd love a, to. This is a, a lot fun, of fun. Fun talk. Thank you, Jen. Quick break. Do some more news. And uh, Gary's got an announcement as well. We'll do that right after this. Blinds galore. Love these guys. Well, family owned uh, for like 25 years. I think it's a mother-daughter team. I've used these guys. Dr. Drew uses these guys. And I got a friends and family sale. It's going to end this week. It's your last chance to take up to 50% off a custom blind shade, shutters, and more. It will transform your house. It's about the least expensive way to transform a house. Uh, They're celebrating 25 years in business, and uh, they're always the first place to buy custom blinds online. Everything Blinds Galore creates is 100% custom. Nothing made until you order it. Designer product without the designer price. And don't bother with the store stuff. Do everything from your home. Their expert team will help you every step of the way, online or over the phone if you're old school. Plus, free samples, free shipping, um, on top of the free expertise. Again, that's all I use is Blinds Galore. It's perfect. It, it is Blinds Galore, right, Dawson? Get over to BlindsGalore.com to order your free samples today and take 50% off during their huge friends and family sale before it ends. That's BlindsGalore.com and let them know that Adam sent you. As we celebrate 14 years of podcasting, here's another memorable moment from the Adam Carolla Show's Ace Awards archives. If Donald Trump becomes president, I will do the following. Punch myself in the eye with a spoon. Move to Barcelona. Drink a bottle of rum, then eat a homeless man's fart. Scream at a wall. Get into a heated argument with a stranger in a hot tub. Cut my dick off. Rip my dick off. Jump into a fire. Fight that guy in the hot tub some more. Let a pit bull bite my dick off. Shove a fat kid into a red tube slide at McDonald's and have him be stuck there for a while. Prank call my old middle school principal and tell her she's a fat bitch. Sneeze into a pregnant lady's mouth and throw a bunch of Skittles at a midget's house. So come on, let's fix America. Vote no on Donald Trump. Now for some new memorable moments, let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Yeah, Adam Ray was supposed to be on today. Something screwed up. But, yeah. you know, Matthew Reese turned out to be fantastic. I love that guy. Great dude. Yeah. It's always good when people know stuff. I, his is every is every person from Wales a historian on their country and all the people from it? Because he was really, really well versed. He was talking about how people from Wales have some sort of rich tradition of storytelling and whatever, which is like, like I said, once I found out that Hungarians had that too, I then hearkened back to my grandfather when we'd <laughs> sleep over telling me stories at, at night, you know, right. making them up, not, not, not reading a, a kid's book, but just t- free, free flowing a story to when I was, you know, eight. And, and, and at some point I found out Hungarians love to talk and yeah. I was like, yeah, okay. It's ingrained in their culture. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, by the way, do you think Adam Ray, when you got him into Leno's garage, uh, he, by the way, he had a great time. He, he texted me how, how, how much he loved that you got him that tour. Do you think he told Jay, Hey, I played you in the Tommy talk. I these are all Early questions day, I would have loved to Tommy. ask him in in person, but yeah, uh, Adam and George, his stepdad and his mom, were in town, and they wanted a tour of Leno's garage, so I just set it up. But Leno was very gracious about it. Yeah, and they got a full tour. All right, let's see some news here. Uh, so there was a a flight from L.A. to Boston on Sunday, mm. and there was this passenger. Mm. Yeah, and he was he was unruly. So mm-hmm. what he, what happened was people noticed that he was already kind of just yelling stuff and being a little weird. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then he they noticed that the he was in the exit row and he tried to open the the exit door while mm-hmm. mid flight mm-hmm. and he couldn't get it open. I guess they don't open mid flight. Um, I think it's about pressure. That might be it, right? I think the difference between the inside and the outside pressure are such that it, it's not doable. Unless you know you can bench seven thousand pounds or something like that. That that that's my sort of understanding. The other reason you know it's not openable in flight is there's a row of seats, oftentimes directly in front of that door or beside that door, with a big latch handle on it. If any drunken idiot could just stand up and throw that hatch down and the door would fly open and depressurize the cabin, 
They would never have the handle. That handle would, would be locked yeah, and it wouldn't guarded. Be easily accessible. At no, all. there there'd be, but there would be a code. You know, there would be a key card. There'd be like a retinal scan that the <laughs> stewardess had to. There's no way they would just leave that handle right there because there are so many idiots like this. Right. So yeah. So they saw the store. And it was opened as much as it could with like some of the handle sticking out, but obviously nothing happening. This guy then goes into the bathroom and he breaks a spoon to make a weapon because he believes one of the flight attendants was trying to kill him. Mm-hmm. So he decided, I'm going to kill this flight attendant first. This is why we need that train. Yeah. Because this shit can't this go guy, on in the this air. This guy should have been having lunch with Matthew. That's right. On the train. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but here's a here's some video people were taking of him. And he, yeah. You can run away. You can all run away if you want. If you're men, you can run. I won't kill you. I both is You can just put up your hands and say, don't kill me then. Or don't approach me because I both is As renamed by God, both are. Since I'm taking over this plane. Oh, my God. Uh-oh. Hello. Yeah, yeah. These Baltas are. Yeah, so he's walking down towards the, the cockpit. And why? And, and thankfully, he's wearing a mask. Yeah. So, so now passengers. Jesus Christ! They're grabbing this guy. I'm still jealous of the people on this flight because there's a monitor in their seat. And they can sit and look at a monitor in the back of the headrest of the seat in front of them. I don't. I don't think we've been on a flight that had a fucking monitor in it for the last well, seven flights. The last flight, I had a monitor. Mike August had a monitor. The entire flight oh, had a monitor. Oh, god damn it! You remember? Yes. <laughs> the last flight we were on, we all had monitors. What are you talking about? Yeah, mine didn't work. Yeah, except Adam's. Of all the seats like on the 250 plane, seats, of, one of them didn't work. Yeah. That was my seat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the this is a cross country flight from Baltimore. They they came up to you. They said we tried resetting. Yours is the only monitor <laughs> on the flight that doesn't work. That's we hope a that's sign. Okay. That's a sign that I'm not loved by whatever it powers of God, the great man. I realized that earlier, Buddha. but this is reassurance. I'm literally sitting in a seat with the only seat on the plane on a six hour and twenty minute flight with no monitor that works. The good news is, is all I do on flights is watch movies that Mike August watches with no sound. Yeah. So you both watch them. Even if I have a monitor that works, I watch his monitor with no sound. Yeah. And at some point, Michael announced that the movie's boring. (laughs) Yeah. But it's terrible. But there's no sound. Yeah. He's only experiencing half of the movie. (laughs) I don't know why he doesn't want sound. To be fair to me, I will not light up my my monitor. I will watch either Mike's or watch the person in between the seats yeah, the in crack. front of me yeah. and whatever it is they're watching. Now, and I will say this too. People are thinking, oh, I watch airplanes and movies with no sound at all. Mike doesn't turn the captions on. So he like he is literally watching with no sound. If you're watching with no sound and you put the captions on, you can get by. He has no idea what's happening in these movies. <laughs> and these he's are making up the dialogue. He's not watching Fantasia... Or even, um, you know, oh God, Avatar, something like that. He watches movies that are heavy on dialogue and not even <laughs> action and then doesn't get them. Yeah, he's watching dramas. He's watching dramas with no dialogue. But then I watch his drama with no dialogue. <laughs> yeah, That's what and we, and do. We, we He should have his own Rotten Tomatoes mm-hmm. site, too, because I'm curious to see how he, he would rate these movies. Um, did you hear about those Americans kidnapped in Mexico? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So... The, the, it was a group of four people, a girl and uh, three guys. Oh, I thought it was two girls and two guys. Uh, that's how it was reported, I think, oh. initially. Well, anyway, two were killed. Yeah. Two made it. I don't know why you killed two. So, yeah, so what happened was they were going they were going down to Mexico because she wanted a tummy tuck. And they were coming from, like, one of the Carolinas yeah. or something? South, well, they had South Carolina... Oh, no, uh, South Carolina, I believe, plates. And yeah. they're, they're going to save 2800 bucks on the Mexican tummy tuck? Yeah. Man, if there's ever a place to a, spend a money, break here. that's the place. Uh, her do mom, it on the tummy tuck. Her mom begged her not to go. And she's like, "I look, it's fine. We're just going down to Mexico for a little bit. I'm going to get a tummy tuck. I'm getting surgery in Mexico. I'm going to Mexico. People leave Mexico to get surgery. That's yeah. how surgery works. You don't go to Mexico to get surgery. So I would be begging her not to go as well. Right. And this is a Tamaulipas, Mexico, which is a 
crime ridden area. This uh, the city actually is called Matamoros, crime ridden border city, and it uh, border city to Texas, um, obviously infiltrated by the cartel who who don't listen to the government, don't listen to authority, and so there was a shootout. And they were kidnapped. There's video of them. Um, it's pretty disturbing video because their bodies are getting dragged, and we think that they're 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 still alive, but they could be dead in this video as they're dragging the bodies. It's it's crazy. Here, look, here's the deal. We okay. There there are like kind of two ways you can deal with folks, others, the folks that aren't uh, do gooders. Um. You can try to reason with them and sort of work it out and be kind of diplomatic with them. But uh, eventually, you just got to fucking go full-fisted, fuck off, it's war. I mean, Mexico's a narco state now. The cartels essentially run the government. There's nothing the government can do because everyone is either taking the silver or taking the lead. You either get paid or you get shot. They've completely come off the fucking rails. Chinese are sending the fentanyl through there. They got labs set up. They're doing human trafficking. At a certain point, you have to designate these cartels as terrorist groups. Yeah. And if you can don't if you can do it like I I don't the, the thing that's crazy about this country and especially the left is like you know what they're finding out about January 6th is uh, a lot of folks, even like the the head of the Capitol Police and stuff, they're like, we got to get the National Guard in here before. Because there's going to be a million people are going to show up. We're going to need a a, a perimeter. And all the fucking Democrats are like, we don't like like the optics. We don't like the optics of of that. It's like, okay, I don't like the optics of it either. But worst optics is a bunch of hillbillies storming the Capitol. That's a worse optic. And you don't like the optics of a wall or you don't like the optics of the National Guard or the military or whatever on the border. You don't like those optics. I agree. That's why we're not doing it in Canada. (laughs) But this is a narco state that has crazy, ruthless drug cartels running it. And I know you don't like the optics of it, but that's just where we're at, douche. Yeah. And there's a couple guys that are going to try to designate them as terrorist organizations and the left is going to push back. And I don't know, Gavin Newsom's going to announce that he just announced that we're like a super sanctuary state now. Like we'll, we'll, we'll take anybody for who's done anything for any reason. We'll just, we'll just pay you. You can swim across something or walk across something and we'll just take you in and we'll, we'll pay for you. It's just, it's not tenable. It's not doable. And, And by the way, Hey, Mexico, If you guys were like Canada and you had your shit together, then we wouldn't do it. Like, I know you don't like the optics of it. I don't like the optics of prisons, but there's people that kill people and they need to go somewhere. Yeah, I like the optics of effectiveness. (laughs) Yes, just, I I know it's like, I don't like the optics of the National Guard. I I get it. And I get it. That's what Trump would have done. He would have called the National Guard. He wanted to call the National Guard and Portland riots and everything. But no one liked the, we like the optics of it. So instead, we have a courthouse burning for three months in, in the middle of Portland. But, 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 but good optics, although I don't know, National Guard keeping peace or courthouse burning for three months. I don't know what feel like the National Guard's a better optic. Yeah. Ugh, fucking idiots. Oh, yeah. Know, that, it, look, T, Tijuana, Mexico is, is not showing signs of self-correction. Look, this, this so, is one of... Tamaulipas is one of the six Mexican states that the U.S. State Department advises travelers not to visit because of, quote, crime and kidnapping. We're aware of this. And it's not like this place is in, you know, Honduras. We share... This borders Texas. We we share 2,300 miles or something of of California and Texas and Arizona. We're Right. right there. Get a fucking prophylactic going. Build something. Put the guard. I, also, all right, here's my hypothetical. I always say to people, I know it's greatly offensive to Mexico and everybody in government in California to, to put people on the border. If Canada said we would like to take 
our guard, our National Guard, and put it on the Canadian border on our side of the border. Would I have thoughts about that? No, I would not. My thoughts would be, they're Canada. They can do whatever the fuck yeah. they want. Go ahead. If they seem to think this is an issue, then let them dispatch their troops. Yeah. And would Canada worry about what we would thought Would I be anyway? sitting there at Niagara Falls with my arms folded? I don't like these optics, Trudeau. No. It's just to do with their sovereign nation. They can do what they fucking want. I don't get it. Take the fucking National Guard, put them at the border. Yeah. All right. So when they were so when these people were initially kidnapped, the FBI offered fifty thousand dollars for the return. Um, but yeah, it's it's been reported now. Two of the guys are dead. They're in a morgue in in the city, and then the other uh, the girl and the other guy are back are back on, in the U.S. Oh man, so Jew. It's yeah, it's really sad. But why did they not take the fifty k? Why they kill him? I don't. Well, I think they were killed probably before the, oh, the award okay. was. Yeah. Or the, uh, yeah. Makes sense. It's, it's fucked up, man. Um, let's see. So let's, let's go to, there's an alligator, in, uh, an eight-foot alligator believed to have been taken out of a Texas zoo 20 years ago. Wow. Um, and was kept as a pet, was found and returned to the zoo. Whoa! I know. So, there. Um, so this this person, uh, a game warden, was investi- was investigating possible hunting without the landowner's permission. It how long, co- Dawson? How long do alligators live? You know, off the top of your head. Well, we know it's twenty years later, right? Well, here's the thing. So they they think that this alligator was stolen when it was an egg or a hatchling by a uh, person who had been a zoo volunteer. Aha. Uh-huh. American alligators live 30 to 50 years. Okay, so... It's a good run. Yeah. So let me say... Almost half the, half its life. They live 30 to 50 years. Turtles live like 120 years. I have no use for an alligator or a turtle, but my fucking dog's going to die in two years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking dog barely sees its 11th birthday. But we got fucking turtles and alligators going on forever. Too long. What is yeah shittiest pets ever? You know, they, for they different really reasons. Are. Yeah, but super shitty pets. But the beautiful, shaggy, friendly, lovable Phil. That dog probably not going to see its eleventh birthday. It's a shame. I'm saying, what 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 kind of sense is this? What kind of world is this? What kind of universe is I don't this? Want it. I don't want to live in this world. We got no bullet train. <laughs> I got a dog. I got a berry. I got an alligator and a turtle outliving me. Uh, you know what? I, yeah, you know I'm what? Sorry. It's for the birds, <laughs> and then you have birds. Birds, hello, yeah. Doesn't matter. Birds don't have to live long. There's so many replacement birds that, you, and you can't tell them apart. Doesn't right. matter. They just keep showing I, up. Yeah, I thought it was just we have infinite birds. Infinite birds. Yeah, yeah. Well, this alligator was uh, was found at this person's house. Uh, she was doing her due diligence, asking if na- the game warden was asking if neighbors have seen or heard anything in the area. Stumbled upon this alligator. And uh, eventually returns the alligator to the zoo, and the person holding the alligator as a pet was given two ci- two citations, each of which carry up to a five hundred dollar fine. Name not released to this person, but I mean it's been twenty years. Maybe just keep the alligator. They're just carrying it. They didn't have the zip tie on the mouth. Well, this or... is a domestic alligator. Yeah, it looks I'm like saying. it's taped. Is it taped? Now? I can't. I don't see know. That. There's like a, there's something on the snout, like that brown strip. Is that? Is that just the the? It's a weird picture. I can't color. quite. I can't quite tell. But if an alligator has a deviated septum and it gets captured, it sucks. Oh, it's uh, got yeah. a weird brown band. Yeah. So alligators have that V snout, whereas crocs have like that U, that bigger U snout. Mm-hmm. And if you come across either one, definitely mm. head towards the alligator because the crocs are more dangerous. More, oh, really? More powerful bite, like th- over three thousand psi. In their bite, the, um, the 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 strongest jaws in the animal kingdom is the the crocodile. Mm. Yeah. All right, one more, and then we'll talk to Gary for a second. Okay, sure. <clears throat> um, so let's see. There is a uh, oh, sorry. Let me let me go to the top here. So there's a woman who is, um, she was caught lying about her race. <clears throat> we you know we Rachel Dolezal esque. So her name's Raquel Avita Swarzati. She uh, was an equity and inclusion officer. Oh, her, yeah. yeah, I love it. In Philly, uh, for a Philadelphia-based social group. So she just stepped down from her position for, um, uh, for lying about her race. 
good. Fuck that bitch. Yeah, so she is of uh, white and British, German, and Italian descent. <laughs> Listen, but she falsely, I, hold on. She falsely what? She falsely claimed to be Arab, Latina, and South Asian. Okay. She did, however, convert to Islam. She converted. Yeah. God bless her. Her and Cat Stevens. All right. <laughs> Listen, everybody. If this pro- If this country has such a problem with race... Why are people going that direction? Why are people going from white to black? Wouldn't you be going from black to white? If you were, if we had such a problem with race, why doesn't Colin Kaepernick just cut his hair short and put on a fucking cardigan and shut the fuck up? No, we reward the people are starting to figure it out. Yeah, It's insane to me. It's insane to me that people don't, Figure, you know what? I want to play that goddamn tape. Remember that tape of that uh, professor from TikTok that, uh, oh, that Dr. Drew, Drew. Drew sent to me? Yeah, so this is... Um, I, I, You can find it. I, I'm is telling you, Sam we are rewarding people, grievance people. We're rewarding people who, who, are, who are oppressed historically. We're rewarding, and that's why people are going that direction. That's why they're claiming to be something to get their kid into college. We're rewarding them, yeah, and they feel they feel that reward, right? Yes. And so it's effective to them. Yes. Drew sent me this. I've been fucking screaming about this for 20 years. Everyone wants to know what's wrong with me. Like, why is this such a bad thing? All this uh, identity politics and groupthink and stuff. I said, being a victim is the worst thing you can do to a group or an individual. Could be one person, could be an entire group of people. Yeah. And tell me, this guy, Drew sent me this over the weekend. It's like 100% true. Yes. This, every single thing this guy says is dead nuts on and is exactly the time we're living in. This is Professor Sam Vaknin. He is a professor of psychology and specializes in narcissism. It's all, all roads lead to narcissism. All roads. All roads. I've been screaming about this. Every single thing we just got fucked over with COVID was all a bunch of narcissistic assholes. It's it's all of it. And now we're heading into the victim identity. Uh, oh God, I was like watching entertainment tonight last night. They were interviewing some black star on, you know, the, the, the black uh, achievement awards. And she's like, it's so nice to have us come out and be rewarded by us, you know, and it's like, stop breaking everything off into groups. It's fucking horrible. All right, let's listen to what he has to say. What are your views on on such things as cancel culture and the whole woke movement and trying to keep all narratives politically correct? What's your view on this? Where is this leading us? It's not my view. It's the view of uh, clinical psychology. In the past few years, we have begun to study victimhood movements and the psychology of victimhood movements. So we have, for example, studies by Gabay, G-A-B-A-Y, and allies, four, four massives conducted mainly in Israel. We have studies in British Columbia and so forth, and I'll size them for you. What we're beginning to find is that certain people are prone to adopt victimhood as an identity. Their victimhood is their identity. Their victimhood endows their life with meaning, makes sense of the world. So it's an organizing principle. They would seek to be victims, even in situations where they would not have been victimized otherwise. When they are not victimized, they push you to victimize them. This is called projective identification. And so there is something called TIV. TIV is a new psychological code describing these kind of people. You can see these people online, for example, in the empaths movement and other nonsensical labels, where these people are actually very narcissistic, very grandiose, extremely aggressive, lacking in them of any kind, and yet they claim that they have been victimized all their lives because they are super empathic and they are sensitive and so forth, and they are proud of their victimhood. They compete with each other. My abuser was much worse than your abuser. No, my abuse was unprecedented. I understand that you were abused. I'm sorry for you, but my abuse was much worse. It's identity politics. It becomes identity politics. A separate set of studies in Canada and elsewhere has shown that very fast, very soon, within usually two to three years maximum, victimhood movements such as Me Too, Black Lives Matter, and so on, get hijacked by narcissists and psychopaths. So the infiltration of narcissists and psychopaths is universal in all these victim of movements and they become the public face of the movement. Victim of movements are one of the most threatening and pernicious developments. There, there is a sociologist by the name of Campbell and he said that we have transitioned from the age of dignity to the age of victimhood. It's very dangerous because if you are a perennial 
victim, if this is your identity, if you are dealt by your victim, you would tend to develop attendant behaviors. For example, you would tend to feel entitled to special treatment. And if the, you don't get this special treatment, you will become aggressive. And this is the irony. This was first described by Kaufman. There's a guy called Kaufman. And he described what he called the drama triangle. And he said abusers, the drama triangle includes abuser, victim, and rescuer or savior. But he said these roles are not fixed. When the victim is not gratified by the rescuer, she becomes an abuser. And when the abuser witnesses the behavior of the rescuer, he tries to be the rescuer. So everyone cycles. What I'm trying to say is that the potential for aggression and even violence in victimhood movements is much larger than in the general population. Right. Yeah. Right. But the biggest problem this country faces is white supremacy. Because we're all we're all drawn to, to the victim. Yeah, it's, it's fucking it's, nuts. It's it insane. Attracts each Listen, other. just 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 so everyone knows, I've been saying this is a horrible idea since Jump Street, breaking everyone off, turning them into victims, creating groups. It's it's insane. And yes, the second they don't get their way, they get super agitated and angry. Yeah. Do you see it going the other way around now? Are we on our, our no, way back, it, it, or are we, just, is it getting worse? Because I mean, like, no, Chris Rock special. People so are like just gonna outrage. people are just gonna have to move to Florida who disagree okay. with it, and that'll be. Oh, that'll, but now we're just, live oh, so you want peace. us to divide? Yes. More. I, well, no. It's I don't want us to. It's what we're gonna. It it's what you're happen. gonna have to do yeah. if you think like a normal human being. You're not gonna be able to live in super blue progressive states who embrace the whole victimhood world and we can't simply just use your race or your sexual proclivities and uh, as a as a hiring standard on super important jobs uh, in the cabinet yeah. by right. the way you're gonna love this so hmm. this this woman who who just resigned at, as the equity and inclusion officer she's outed by her family her oh mo- good her mom came forward he was like, this isn't true. She's not. There's commerce to be done. There's a job. Byron Allen is a rich, rich, multi-million dollar man because yeah. he is a, he's black. He owns a network. There are many endowments, and, and he has taken advantage of all of them to to his credit. He's, he's working a, the he, system. He's a businessman. Yeah. And and that's how the, that the system is going to work that way. If we are giving handouts to people who are in a victimized religion or race or whatever it is, then more people are going to identify as that to get whatever the perks are that go, look, somebody decided it'd be a good idea to have a handicap placard that you could put on the dash of your car. So you could park right in front of the Costco that lasted 10 minutes. And then people that were totally able-bodied started throwing the placards on their car. Why? Because everyone wants to park in the front of the Costco. That's how humans are. So if there's an advantage to being black or being American Indian or whatever, you shall identify as that in order to game the system. All right, Gary. Gary Smith. Gary, who's this? Yeah, just hop on, I don't know, one of these mics over there. It is his uh, last day here in studio. Gary's been a fixture here for many, many years. Seen yeah. it all since 2010. Since 2010, started as a lowly intern. Mm. He's uh, matured sweat, into, a, into a man. Blood, allegedly. Mm. Yeah, no, no, you have. Well, you, thank you. It's been a it's been a hell of a ride, and thank you for the opportunity. I'm uh, I'm not going far. I'm going to be working with Mark Garrigus a little bit more often. We're going to keep reasonable doubt going. Ace, you are always welcome as a guest. Yeah. And uh, so subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtubecom slash podcast. And uh, follow me on Twitter at GPatrickSmith. I think I have some projects coming up that uh, fans of this show might be excited by. Good. We wish you well, Gary. Yeah. Um, also, we're no longer going to do Friday shows. We'll just do four days a week in the name of freeing up my schedule for all these new projects and whatnot. But we'll keep you posted. Everything is reversible. We may go back at some point. But for now, there will be no Friday show. Um I'm going to be at Jimmy Kimmel Live tonight, doing uh, not live, but comedy club tonight, doing a show, uh, doing stand up with a bunch of other stands. Come by, maybe some tickets left. Naples, Florida, off the hook, coming up March 24th, 25th. Dawson. I got a show coming up yeah. tonight as well at mm-hmm. the Comedy Chateau in North Hollywood. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah my nice. parents are going to be there. Nice. I'm doing stand up for the first time in oh, front of my parents. Oh, dear God. So I will tell jokes about my dad. Dear sweet God. And I got shows coming up. Turlock, Fresno, Oklahoma City. Just go to amcrow.com for all that. And until next time, this is Adam. 
for Matthew Reese and Max Pata and Gary and everyone else. Say it. Mahalo. <laughs>